In today's video, I want to show you the very powerful tool called the Solver in Microsoft Excel. The Solver is a great way to get to a bottom line or a target number, and it goes a little bit further than the Goal Seek. So first of all, you want to make sure that the Solver is installed on your computer. When I pick on the data menu up top, if it was installed properly, the solver would be over here on the right hand side. So let's make sure we turn it on first. To turn it on, we'll pick on the file menu up top, file, and we'll pick on options. By the way, I'm using Excel 2016 for this video, but this should work in Excel 2013, Excel 2010, and Excel 2007. I'll pick on file and then options. The solver is called an add-in. So I'll come over here and pick on add-ins. And then you come down here and you pick on the word go. And then we'll pick on the solver add-in. All right, so I picked on file and then options. Within options, I picked on uh, add-ins. Then I picked on the word go. And then you get the screen and you'll pick on, you make sure you check where it says solver add-in like that. And I'll click on OK. Notice that on the right side of the data menu, now we have something that's called the solver. So once you turn it on, it should be there. Otherwise, you could just repeat those steps uh, to turn it back on again. Uh, here's a, a model. Let's say you're coming out with um, a new product or a service for your company, and you want to send out your information to your client base. So in column A, we have uh, the state that we're going to send it to. Column B has the number of clients in that state. Column C has the cost per flyer in that state. Column D has the cost per mailing in that state. Column E has the number of times you're going to mail to that state. Column F is the total for that state. I think they're taking column D times column E. That'll give us column F. F7 is the grand total for the entire project. And then column G has the percent of total for each state. Let's say you're in charge of this project and your budget is 47,000. You can spend less than that, but you can't exceed it. You can't spend more than 47,000. Uh, another constraint is that Minnesota has to get at least 50% of the budget. So that number right there has to be at least 50%. And each state has to be mailed to at least three times. Uh, so they can be mailed to more than three, but they have to be mailed to at least three times each. Uh, so what we're trying to do here is you want to use as much of the budget as possible without going over, but still keeping all the other constraints. The way you're going to use the budget is to increase the number of mailings. So you can try to get to this solution yourself, or you can put all that information into the solver and Excel will come up with a solution for you. Let's see how it's going to work. We'll pick a, uh, by the way, this could be any kind of data model. I'm just using this as an example to show you the steps for the solver, but it could be any kind of data model. It has to have at least one formula, but it probably would have more than that. I'll pick on the data menu and I'll pick on the word solver. And then you get this new window. You see where it says set objective. That has to be the same. That has to be a cell that has a formula. So I'll pick on the F7. All right. So the objective has to be a cell that has a formula or your bottom line. In this case, I'm going to say max. That means use as much of the budget as possible without going over, but still keeping all the other constraints. Pretty soon that we'll see that we'll, uh, min will have a, a different result for us. And if you wanted F7 to be a specific value, then you would say value of, and you would type in your target number right there. But in this case, we'll pick on the word max, which means use as much of the budget as possible without going over, but still keeping all the other constraints. It says by changing cells, the, the things that they're going to change this time will be the number of mailings. So I'm going to highlight from E2 to E6, and everything else will stay consistent for this model. Now we're going to add those constraints that we talked about. I'll click on Add. And the first thing I said was that F7 has to be less than or equal to. And for the constraint, I can type in 47,000, but a better way would be to click on that cell that has the number 47,000. This way I could just change that number in the spreadsheet and then rerun the solver. So that, that'll be the more efficient way. So I'm saying F7 has to be less than or equal to G9. So it has to take that under consideration when it comes up with a solution. And you can have as many constraints as you need. I'm going to pick on add. 
The next thing that we said was that Minnesota's percent of total has to be at least 50%. So I'll pick on G2 has to be greater than or equal to 50% That's what I meant to say. So I'll pick on greater than or equal to, and I'll pick on the 50% for the constraint. G2 has to be greater than or equal to G10. We'll pick on add. Uh, another thing I said was that the, the number of mailings all have to be three or at least three. So I'm going to highlight from C, uh, from E3 to E6, they have to be greater than or equal to the three, which is cell G11. E2 through E6 must be greater than or equal to G11. I'll pick on add again. Now, another constraint that I forgot to mention is that the number of mailings all have to be integers. So I'm going to highlight from E3 to E6, E2 to E6. I'll pick on uh, this pull down. And this one, this says INT, which means uh, integer. E2 through E6 has to be a, a, an integer or a whole number. Now, when you do this in real life, you can have as many constraints as you need. Sometimes I've seen people have 10, 15, or 20 constraints or even more. So at this point, I'll pick on OK and we're going to review what we have. Set objective F7. That has to be a cell that has a formula to the max. I want to use as much of the budget as possible without going over, but we still have to use all the other constraints as well. By changing cells E2 through E6, that's the number of mailings. Everything else will stay consistent throughout the model. Subject to the following constraints. E2 through E6 must be an integer. E2 through E6 must be greater than or equal to G11, which is um, the, um, the number three. F7 has to be less than or equal to G9, which is the 47,000. And G2 has to be greater than or equal to G10, which is the 50%. Uh, so you set up your constraints. Now here's one that would be really important for you. I'm gonna come over here and pick on options. Now, if you know anything about statistics, you can change these values and you'll get different results. But here's one that we have to change. I want to uncheck it where it says ignore integer constraints. We're going to uncheck that. You see, if you didn't uncheck that, then even though you asked for integers in that one step, it would really ignore that. So it's really important to uncheck that option right there. I'm going to click on OK. Now, before I pick on the word solve, notice the numbers over here. The number of the mailings are all three, and you can see how the total is $29,344.50. I'll pick on solve. Now it says it found a solution for us. Let's see if the solution is any good. All of the mailings are integers. They're all at least three. Minnesota got at least 50% of the budget, and it's less than 47,000. So when you do the solver correctly, it's going to save you a lot of time. Otherwise, you would have had to come up with that solution. So I'll click on OK. Now that the solver is set up, let's see how we can get different results. I'm going to come over here and I'll type in 54,000. Maybe next month the budget is 54,000. And in this case, I'll pick on um, solver. Notice how everything is already set up. I'm just going to rerun the solver. Remember how we pointed that constraint to that cell. So all I have to do is rerun it at this time. I'll pick on solve. Now let's see if the, uh, the result is any good. Those are all at least three. They're all integers. Minnesota got at least 50% of the budget, uh, budget, and that's less than 54,000. I'll pick on OK. Now let's see uh, what min means. I'll pick on solver, and I'll pick on min. Everything else can stay the same. Min means what's the absolute minimum you can get away with, but still keeping all the constraints. I'm going to pick on uh, solve. And now it's actually back to the way it was before. All the mailings are three. They're all integers. Minnesota got 50% of the budget. And F7 is certainly less than 54,000. So that's the absolute minimum we can get away with. Now I want to show you how you can actually go back and forth among your different uh, solver results. Uh, I want to say save scenario. And I'm going to call this one min. You give it a good name. And I'll pick on OK. Now let's go back to the solver and I'll pick on max. 
with the 54,000 and I'll click on solve. I'm gonna say this scenario. And I'll say max. And I'll click on OK. Let's do one more. I'll change it to 60,000. And I'll say solver. What if, uh, uh, and then we'll pick on solve at the max. And we have different results. I should have saved that scenario. Let's try that again. Click on solver, solve, save scenario. And I'll call this one max 64,000. We can go back and forth among the scenarios. So I'll pick on um, data, what if analysis, scenario manager. Now, maybe I made some of these before this uh, session, but that's okay. I'll pick on bare minimum and I'll pick on show and it plugs those numbers in. I'll pick on max and pick on show, min. Now I can easily go back and forth among, among the different solver results, as you can see. Now I have another video that's all about setting up the scenarios, but you can see how we can use the scenarios within the solver. Now we can go back and forth among those very easily. Click on close. So first of all, you have to turn the solver on if it's not on. The way we did that is we picked on file and then options. Then I picked on the, uh, the word add-ins and I picked on go. And you make sure that this is checked over here where it says solver add it. Then you'll get that result over here that's called solver. Now you would ha have a, a financial model over here of some kind. It has to have at least one formula, but I'm sure yours has even more than that. And then you saw how we use uh, the screen to set up the solver. The important part about the screen is that you can have as many constraints as you need and um, you can, um, have a, you can change different cells over here. So it goes a lot further than the goal seek, as you can see. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick on close right there. And that is how we can use the solver in Microsoft Excel.